Hi, hello, welcome and welcome back to yet another episode on Little Slap YouTube channel. And today in this video we are going to see about yes, you're right. You would have already seen this in the thumbnail. Yes, we're going to discuss about the precise throughput timer, how to use it and what are all the advantages of precise throughput timer. This video is going to be really, really, really fun and interesting because this is a one of a kind uh, timer in JMeter and we will see some lot of interesting facts about this timer and one more change which was fixed in this particular release to the next release. So in fact we will see about what are all the changes that has happened in 5.6.3 which is the latest version of JMeter. Yes, JMeter has released its latest version which is 5.6.3 and we will see what are the changes that were there in our next video. So in this video, we're going to see about the precise timer. So here I have added the precise timer. In the first, let me just bring it out. Okay. So here we have got the precise timer. So what is a precise throughput timer and how can we use it? So firstly, this timer, the precise throughput timer introduces variable passes which is it can introduce passes at variable time and it is or it can use to calculate to keep the total throughput so here if you can see the first variable that we can pass is the target throughput which is the total throughput which we can fix or which we can set up here so we'll see what are all the arguments we can pass here so the first thing is the total or the target throughput which is the samples per throughput period so it, which is one so for example here I will set as one I will just show you how to use it so the first thing is it is one and then the throughput period so the target throughput in samples per throughput period which is one throughput for every 60 seconds is what we expect with this setting and the test duration is 60 seconds so based on this what I'm expecting is I want one hit for every 60 second but since I have added five threads so I will have five hits for every one minute which is every 60 seconds so that is very basic very basic uh, setup which I have for the precise throughput timer in fact we can add more and more and I will tell you how to use it but before that let's see a quick introduction on the precise throughput timer so this timer, the precise throughput timer, does not generate any threats. So the resulting throughput will be lower if the server is not capable of handling it. Or if other timers add too big delays or if there, there are not enough threats or if there are any time consuming test elements to prevent it. So that's how the precise timer works. So although the name tells us that it's a precise throughput timer that does not mean or that does not produce precisely the same number of samples over one second interval during the test. In fact, the timer works best for rates under 36,000 requests per hour. However, we can vary the hits or we can vary the throughput. So what is the best location? So in our previous video, we discussed about how can we place the uniform random timer so when it comes to precise throughput timer what is the best location for placing the precise throughput timer so one common thing or one best practice which i would tell you is you can add a dummy sampler put the sampler add a dummy sampler So here let me check whether I have a dummy sampler okay so here I do not have a dummy sampler let me check whether I can find one I think it should be in the sampler and okay for now I don't have a dummy sampler so let me add a HTTP request at the top of all the other requests okay and then under this let me add the 
or in fact I can even keep the precise throughput timer at the top Let, let's try uh, how, do, how does it work so let me remove this unwanted HTTP request so I have the precise throughput timer here and let's see whether that's the right place to set up so what I expect is I want to have one hit for every 60 minutes for every sorry for every 60 seconds which is one minute and only there are like five threads and in fact we do not have to handle the delays because it is automatically being set up in the number of throughput and the duration so I, I can show you how does it happen so let me start the test over the existing file I'm going to the view results tree and there's one interesting thing here so here you can see the precise to throughput timer shows there is one required and this is the rate the duration here and it will in fact tell us like what what time does this hit gets triggered so let's wait so here as inside as mentioned the first one has got triggered at the 18th second so here you can see we have got one hit for all the One, uh, sorry, the number of hits is like one for every step. And now, as it has mentioned in the previous monitoring part, so the second set of hits has come, and now the third set of hits will be coming in the particular second. So, before that, let's stop the test and let's see what are all the other parts. So, so far, we found out that this is the part, but let me show you I can just place it inside the script which is in between the script and let me try to run the test so the previous one did not work out as expected because I really wanted to have or I, I really wanted to see five hits for each and every transaction but it did not happen so now let me make one more change here which is let me just copy this transaction here and let me just paste it same way for this as well and then this and then the last transaction here let me save this clear and let me run the test again so let me go back to the view results tree. So as we have already seen, we will be getting the number of hits as one required for every 60 seconds. And this is the first one, which is, which is showing us 46. So let's wait for the time. So as I've already told you, this precise throughput timer has a random delays. So it will randomly hit. So previously we saw the first hit that has come up at the 18th second and now it shows 46th second so let's wait until we get that and meanwhile we will discuss the other part of this particular timer so the next part is the ramp up and the startup spike so how does it work so yeah so now we have got the hit at the 46th second as we have already seen and here we have got the hits so this transaction has been clapped for some reason I think both the names are same so it has been clapped but still we have got only one request which is not the expected one because we really have five users okay so let me just again change it so let me bring it inside the script so I have brought it inside the transaction and meanwhile let me change this names so that they don't get added to the transaction so for that what i can do is let me just change it to one and then let me change this to two just for the sake of understanding the transactions now let me save this clear it and let's go back again let's start the test Meanwhile, let's discuss. Okay, so first hit will be at the eighth second. So let's wait for the eighth second. And meanwhile, yeah, as I told you, so we might have used ramp up or similar approaches. Yeah. 
it's successful we have got five hits so now we have you must have understood where exactly have we have to place the throughput timer. you don't need to keep the throughput timer inside all the requests but inside the first request the first request it's, it's always good because we have got the expected number of hits okay let's not don't waste time on this part again so the ramp-up period so we might use ramp up or any other similar approaches to avoid the spike at the starting of the test. For example, like if we have configured the thread group to have 100 threads and we have set up the ramp up period to zero, which is exactly a small number. So all the threads would be starting at the same time because the ramp up period is zero, right? And this part, which is like starting every, every user at the same time will actually produce a lot of spike a lot of load to the system on top of that if we set up the ramp -up period too high which is like a long duration so it might result in a very less number of hits or the throughput will be very less or there will be less threads which will be available at the beginning of the test but this precise load uh sorry, precise throughput timer which schedules executions in a random way as i have already shown you like the first one it showed at 18 seconds and then when uh, we were doing the second test it is like 46 seconds and then again come back come down to 8 seconds so it can be used to generate constant load and it in fact it can be recommended to set both ramp up period and the delay to zero so that's why we have set up the delays to zero but it still managed to give the number of hits which we wanted to so this is how the test works so as i have shown you so I wanted one hit for one user. So since I have kept five users, I've got five hits. And for every one minute, I will be getting five hits. And so far I have crossed one minute and 29 seconds. And I have got 10 hits because at the total, I have kept a, a total count of 10. So with that, my hits will get hit. I mean, like gets processed and then it reaches the finite state and then it come up come out of the test so the same way you can also set up the number of hits which you wanted and if you set up the number of hits or the target throughput and then the total throughput so it's always going to be one divided by 60 so in case if you want to achieve so there are like two options to set the throughput so if you can if you want like for example so if you want to generate 60 iterations per hour, then it has to be 60 iterations, which will run for 3600 seconds, which is like for one hour, 3600 seconds, 60 minutes, yeah, which is for one hour. And then this will run the test for one hour, where you will get 60 throughput iterations multiplied by the number of users so this is how the precise throughput timer works so it it all does not come up with the with very first few adjustments in fact it will take a lot of time for you to properly set up so you have to like do multiple timing settings you have to increase you have to decrease you have to find you have to work out a lot in setting up this timer in fact it will take a lot of time for you to understand how it does does really work but once you have caught once you have catch up the knot of how does it really work then it will be always easy for you to set up so in fact you can set up based on your requirement you don't need to worry about the adding the delays so you know for other tests you must be adding a lot of delays in between or you must need to calculate using the workload modeling so but when it comes to this particular timer you just need to worry about the number of throughput that you want to achieve the duration and the total number of hits so this will automatically gives you the number of hits you don't need to worry about at what point of time you have to ramp up or how much thing time do you need to introduce between each and every transaction it's just giving that target throughput and in fact this again precise throughput timer if you really want to have like 60 like for example 1000 hits you will not exactly achieve it in fact it will be like a very closer one like 985 995 in fact but it won't go beyond that so you can try all these by doing mix and match you can try everything or like whatever you want to try you can just try this but the basic concept is this all you want is you have to understand 
how much throughput you want in what duration of your time. In fact, you can even try this here. Say, for example, if you you, you would have seen here, like the precise throughput timer is one required. For example, if I'm testing this now, so let me just keep it as 60 uh, throughput and 60 for every 60 seconds. So let's see how does it work. In fact, it will tell you clearly like how much throughput will be can be achieved. So let me just clear this. Let me run this test again. And here you can see the precise throughput timer, which is 12. For the very first time, you'll get 12 hits. You can even see that here. So when we see, we have got, so as I already told you, it's like not the exact hit, but okay, I think it's because of this particular thing. So let me just increase it to 500, for example, and let me close it. So let me clear it, and then if I run it again, you can see here, so if we have got 12 required, and when is the first hit, which is at the, we have got the first hit, so it's, it has got 5 hits, because we have got 5 users, right? So, let me see here, so we have got, the precise throughput timer is set to 12, and then, we have got let's see how many hits we have got so far okay so since we have got the users to be five it is hitting in terms of five and again it's like 60 throughput for 60 seconds which means like almost one per second so that's what is it's expected so let's wait for the test to get complete or at least let's wait for the 60 seconds to get completed so here you can see for the first 60 seconds we have got 60 hits so this is something like if you divide this number for example like the number of throughput divided by the throughput period which is like 60 divided by 60 which is one so like for every one second you'll get one hit and let's make a different a quick change so what i'm going to do is like i'm going to know reduce the number of threads to one and let's see what happens so previously we have got 60 hits for every 60 seconds and now let's see what happens so here you can see the hits is going like crazy because you have got just one user and each user will have to achieve this number of transactions which is like 60 transactions in a minute so the throughput has increased right so that's what is happening so the number of users is automatically adjusting to reach the amount of throughput whereas in the previous example when we have set up like five users they have got enough delays between them and when i have set up like one user automatically it starts to kick up like it's, it's keep on throwing up the hits with one user so the same way, if I'm increasing this to 10 users, you can now see it will take enough delays. For example, let's see, it's showing six required. See, for example, so for the first six seconds, it took 10 hits. And then the 12th second, yes, we'll, get, we'll be getting the next number of hits. So let's wait for that. The 20th second yeah so here for the 20th second we have got the 20 hits so for every 10 seconds automatically it gives us for every 10 seconds in fact it can happen in between like for the very first second can happen at the 15th second for the for the 10 11 to 20 it can happen in between that 10 seconds anytime in between the 10 seconds so this precise timer is actually working for you to reach your goal so make use of this precise throughput timer and tell me in the comments like how do you really use it and is it really helpful to you. So until I meet you in another interesting video, it's bye bye from Asan Shanmugam and Little Slaw.